I want to start by talking a little bit about Welcome to the Art of Maps. In this presentation, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of maps and how art has influenced the creation of them. Now, let's talk a little bit about the project that we're going to work on after this presentation, which is going to be the actual creating of your own map of an island. So in this presentation, we'll talk about how that has been done before throughout history. Enjoy. I want to start by talking a little bit about the history of maps. So maps have really been around since pretty much the start of time. And think of it like this. When people wanted to start documenting what they knew, then they wanted to start documenting where they have been and what they know about that area. So who are the first people who created these maps? Well, artists were actually the first people that created the maps because of their artistic skills and abilities, they were able to document it in a way that other people would be able to see and recognize the areas that they were talking about. So before Google Earth came about and before people used GPS to get everywhere, artists were actually drawing up maps so that people could figure out what was going on around them and how they could get to specific locations for food or for animals or, you know, for whatever it may be, you know, possibly even protection or, or a place to, you know, get away from the elements or something like that. So as maps kind of have evolved, they went from these two-dimensional drawings to today's world where they're actually a variety of different ways that they're presented to us. And we'll talk a little bit about that presentation of, you know, information that we want to know and communicate to each other later on in this presentation. So what did these hand-drawn maps look like, you may wonder? I, I brought together some examples of some different hand-drawn maps here and throughout the next couple slides to kind of give you an example of how detailed they can be and the different ways that you can show with color or with the line quality information in your maps. So I spent a bunch of time living in Florence, Italy, and when I was there, it was really fun. And one thing I really noticed about maps was that all of the ruling people of the time when the Renaissance was going on had all these huge maps that were about probably, I would, I would say, maybe 18 feet by 10 feet or maybe a little bit smaller than that, but in those ranges where it's just a massive map and they are to document the land that these people would own or or sort of rule over. And in Florence, I definitely saw this was something that really intrigued me. So I'd go around to all these ruling families' households and check out the maps that they had created. And this is an example of one of the maps from the Renaissance time period that would be, you know, created on these massive sheets of paper, canvas, and then these people would have up in their houses. The next example can be found on the next slide. So that's just one interesting way that people would make maps during the Renaissance time period, which was around 14 to 1500s. Thank you. One fun example came to mind of people who need to draw out maps and create maps. I thought of video game creators and how they need to create maps for their different levels in their games. Here's an example of an actual image that they came up with, but all of these images all started from maps. This is a game called Assassin's Creed, and it's taking place in old historical Italy. Now, if you think back to those maps of Italy, 
it's kind of fun to see how they've incorporated those into the actual video game. So in the next couple slides, we'll see how the video game creators took those maps of Italy and actually applied it to their game and created levels based off of them. Now, it's kind of fun because I lived in this in one of the cities that's in this video game. I could actually go to the location that was in the video game. And a lot of the streets in Italy, because it's a historical place, are actually still the same setup. And a lot of the buildings are still the same since the Renaissance time period. So it's kind of fun to see how that all goes, goes full circle. And it was pretty much based off the idea that people back in that day were making maps. And now they're applying those ideas to today's video gaming world. So here's an example of what I was talking about. Here in the video game, they've actually created the map of Florence. Now, where the X is is where I lived. And as you would zoom in on this map in the video game, you can kind of get to individual streets. And then I was able to go with the character in the game through those streets that were documented on the map and find where I actually was able to live for this time when I was studying abroad. So it was kind of a fun experience that I was only able to find where the building was in the video game because of the map that was created. And that map that was created was based off of these historical hand-drawn maps that I had found when I was in Italy. So here's an example of a map from that same game. And this is more done in the style that you'd see on a Google Earth or something where you'd get the image from the actual satellite. But in this case, the artists that created this map actually had to go in and, and draw the actual things that are going to be included in it, very similar to what you're going to do. Now, I'm not expecting yours to be this detailed and, and uh, finite, but I just want you to kind of get a brainstorming ideas of what your map could look like. Here's just one last example of a map that you can find in that game, and it's the map of Rome. Now, in the game, as you would go throughout the levels, you kind of have these screens that break in and out as you're going to a new part of the map. Now, I thought this was an interesting image because it really shows how maps and visual representation of them in today's world is kind of a, kind of a cool thing that artists are looking into. Now we're going to transition into looking at more, looking more deeply into that idea of the representation of maps and visual information as artists today in our visual culture. So I just want to talk a little bit about the bigger picture. And this doesn't necessarily directly relate to the assignment of creating a map of an island. But I just want to touch on it because I think it's important. Um, so something to think about is the idea that in today's culture, there's so much data being documented. So, you know, you go anywhere, you fill out a form that's put into a computer system, and this data about you or about, you know, hundreds of millions of things is being documented almost daily. Um, and how is that data then going to be displayed in the future so that we can learn from it, so that we, you know, learn from the mistakes or learn from things that have happened in the past. So a uh, 21st century theorist, he tweeted that the 19th century was defined by the novel, the 20th century culture was defined by cinema, and the 21st century will be defined by the interface. So what does that mean? Let me show you an example on the next slide of what this 21st century theorist is talking about and how our time period will really be defined by the displaying of data. On this YouTube video, you'll see the documentation of the flight patterns of all of the flights coming in and out of North America in a 24-hour time period. Now this information was documented, it was data, and now it's mapped out. 
And this is how all of this kind of relates to what we're talking about. Um, people originally would draw a map by hand so that they could know where to go. You know, they know where lakes are, they know where rivers are. And then eventually, you know, that got done, that now is done with satellites and things like that. But the visual representation idea is still the same. So, if you think about it, your data that you're coming up with here, you know, you're just kind of creating it. You're creating a map of an island and you're representing it by showing, you know, in your key how the elevation changes or whatever your map specifically relates to, that's what you're displaying. So in this image, you see all of these flights being displayed in a very artistic way. So go through and watch the video and I think you'll have a better idea of what I'm talking about. So the reason why I brought up this idea of displaying data and this artist who shows all these different visual representations of data is because I wanted for you to see how the information you are learning can apply in today's world and in today's very visual culture. He, the artist, takes the information and displays it visually. And that's, that's his job. That's his artistic career. Um, I just thought it would be important to show you how many different, I don't know, visual representations are needed in today's world and how viable being an artist could be in your possible future. Um, that's all I really have for you.